There's a red moon rising on the Cuyahoga River, rolling into Cleveland to the lake. There's a red moon rising on the Cuyahoga River. And welcome back to Sports on Tap. What a classic. We're part of the NEO Sports Insiders Network, You're presented by there. RRT Productions. Got to be a real try, Franny. Appreciate that one. Yep. Mm. I'm Rob Trout. We have Ed Dick, Sean Duffy, Josh, Jeffy. How can you not like this song? Because it's the same guy did the Toy Story song, and I've watched Toy Story five I've times in the last three love days. Love it. Love it. Yeah, but he did this way before the Toy Story song. I know, but. I love Toy Story. Anytime I hear this guy's voice, it's like, oh, God, here it comes again. Well, in case you, you're out <laughs> there. <laughs> 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 In case you're out there and you're listening, <laughs> we're going to be talking Cleveland Indians baseball. Yeah, if you couldn't figure that out from the f- yeah. from the first part of that. Yeah, and this, every yeah. radio in Cleveland turns uh, off. Yeah, it's time for the Indians to step up for their year, year-end year review. That's right, guys. And, uh, you know, I'm interested to see some thoughts and opinions. We do have a Tigers fan sitting at this table. Yes, you so do. So his uh, views and opinions are going to be rather interesting. <laughs> my, and, my and, and, they, and they mean half as much. But well, that's okay. I... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says that, but my my opinions and views are usually pretty much dead on with yours. And as an objective observer, and not a wahoo maniac, he got. That I don't think me. there are many wahoo maniacs around. It's just I, if it showed in uh, progressive field yourself. this year, yeah, there weren't many no. wahoo ma- maniacs in the stands. But uh, maybe there will be with some of the renovations uh, going on again this year. Uh, but Josh, we'll start with you. You know, last year was uh, you know. I think a lot of people didn't really expect too much. I think, you know, there's a good young nucleus there um, that's impressive, but they haven't really established and gotten consistent play. There's been a lot of injuries, mm-hmm. and, you know, a lot of people I think are disappointed that in the off season the Indians haven't really done anything. Well, I'll disagree with you on the fact. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that were predicting the Indians to do a lot of good things Such last year. Such as Sports year. Illustrated. <laughs> Sports Illustrated, but the fans in general. I don't know. I mean, you no, can, I, you can I th- be part of the hype and say, you know, you're excited to see that, but all I, in well, all, I just you, think, know, you I have think to a, see. Yeah, a lot of oh, people. A, point. a lot of people saw uh, the young starting pitching, uh, Corey Kluber coming off a Cy Young Award uh, winning year. He was the ace of a very young and very good staff. Um, you know, you had some down years of some guys last year. Jason Kipnis, uh, who, you know, Michael. Played hurt. Yep, played hurt last year. But you had guys like that coming back. So there was a lot of hope and promise for this team. And when you got a team managed by Terry Francona, who, like him or not, is still considered one of the best managers in the game. So there was a lot of uh, expectations were high for this team. It just never kind of came into fruition. I mean, uh, at the beginning of the season, the bats were so cold. Um, they had some good good pitching outings uh, from Corey Kluber. The guy just would not get run support, for example. Uh, and then towards the end of the year, the bats started to pick up. Jason Kipnis started playing again at an all-star level. Michael Brantley continued on his solid stretch there. Uh, and then you started to develop some young players. Francisco Lindor finally came up, and we saw a runner-up as for rookie of the year. Um so they showed some promise on the offensive end uh, towards the end, of the end of the year, but however the pitching staff kind of s- sort of took a step back and came down to reality. Bullpen wasn't as strong this year as it was last year. So, yes, it was a disappointing year for the Tribe. Now, um, going into the offseason, the winter meetings, we talked about it before we went on the show, uh, before we went on live here today. Big name out there, Todd Frazier from the Cincinnati Reds. The Todd Father. Uh, third baseman, Frazier. batted 255 last year, 35 home runs, right-handed power hitter, 28, 29 years old, two years left on his deal. Indians have been rumored not once, but twice, three times, to be very interested in trying to get a, a deal done with Cincinnati. And, uh, you know, Rob and I were kind of arguing, yeah, do you um, wish on, do you trade away one of your young starting pitchers to go ahead and get a right-handed power hitter that you desperately, desperately need in the lineup? And, and I, I say yes, you got to do it. I'd even throw in slider. I mean, at this point, I, I'd well, throw in the, the, the old old slider <laughs> when he originally came. I mean, Great! Slider. Now the Indians won't come onto our air. Fantastic, Rob. No, um, yeah, is not gonna be very happy about about that. <laughs> hey, listen, just kidding. I trade some of our beer camp pyramids out there in the 
the right field yeah. corner bar out there that I've seen at, at many tri They paid millions of dollars for those beer can pyramids. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> but um, you know, I guess it's a little disappointment. I I know you don't you don't win a World Series in the off season, but the Indians. It seems like every year it's it's printed printed on black and white. Everyone sees what they need, and they just don't go out and get what they need. Now it's not to say that they won't. But they're looking at guys like Shane Victorino was was who turned him down before, which led to Nick Swisher. Yeah, uh, and now you know Shane Victorino's thirty five, thirty six years old, twilight of his career. Those are not the type of players. I think we should go need. after Shelley Duncan again. I think. What about our main man, there. Mark Reynolds? He just yeah. signed with Milwaukee. Damn, I know. You know Milwaukee, what? No, smart. You, you had a good point though. If you want to get. A good hitter. I mean, two fifty five. The batting average isn't unbelievable, but thirty five home runs is. Well, but yeah, it's not. It's not even the fact. You, you know, have to give up something to get. Yeah, something. and you need a threat in the middle of that lineup. A right handed power. And and yeah. Sean, we talked about Deja, it. I mean, that's yes, like I've he, heard. He this admitted before. that. He admitted. He even said that. Less. I didn't admit anything. I was saying I told you flat out. That yeah, he that said. If you he, look yeah. at that lineup, one through nine, there's no one afraid. No day. pitcher is scared of the Cleveland Indians lineup. I'm sorry. Maybe Lindor. Of down the road, not right now. And on top of that, you guys had so much money tied up in Bourne and Swisher. Finally, you made the good move to move them to you know Atlanta. Took fifteen million dollars to coax that deal, but you got the best thing you could out of it. They and, need to, they need to get a bat, and they need to get a young bat that's going to be there long term. And that's what I don't like about the Todd Frazier thing. I think Todd Frazier's like, look, if I can salvage two years in a mid market like Cleveland, and have a Pretty, have it same a consistent two years, not even a great two years, consistent two years. He makes his money the year after in New York, Boston, L.A. with either the Angels or he goes. Maybe to, he goes to the Tigers. Maybe he goes to the Cubs. Maybe he does go to the Tigers. You well, know what I'm saying? Well, that's where the money. See, but that's where the money's at. Cleveland's not going to pay Todd Frazier what he what he feels he's right, worth. Right, but the Indians are banking on a guy like Todd Frazier who want to be consistent and want to have those numbers here for two years at least until. The guys in the minor leagues, Clint Frazier, for example, can maybe if you uh, keep him, yeah, that's if true. you don't trade him for him, then yeah, I mean that's the thing. I mean, how you, you going to trade? And I think that's what Rob's saying is, you may have to give up the people that you want Todd Frazier to take the place of mm-hmm. in order to get Todd Frazier, and then you're sacrificing your future for a short term gain, possibly. Well, I'll tell you, if they're trading for Todd Frazier, you'll probably have to trade like a Salazar. Or a pitcher of that caliber and another minor and league. Every, I don't think an an everyday player, player, it won't Todd be Frazier's another an Clint player. Frazier because Clint Fra- Frazier is actually no, I mean, a top yeah. prospect. Well, yeah. Frazier and Zimmer are probably your two untouchables yeah. unless you can get a, a version of Todd Frazier for more than two years. That's and well, which I, will take your starting pitcher right. to do that. Not, I think not, the, not prospects. I think when you look at a guy like Todd Frazier, great ball player, fantastic ball player. You know. When he was in the home run derby, I was cheering for him, and and I'm and I'm not a, I'm an AL guy, and I and I was cheering for him. The one thing that frightens me about him is that he's always been kind of under the radar. It, it, you know what I mean? Like it really this this year at the home run derby, it popped. He had all that momentum and everything like that, and he, and he continued it on, and good for him. I just get concerned because it just seems like every time Cleveland tries to the Indians try to make a move on a guy that had a good year last year, they end up getting burnt. Like I'm not saying Todd Frazier is Nick Swisher because it's a completely different situation, but Todd Frazier could be a guy where he may be the the, the Reds may want to sell high with him because they realize, hey, we're gonna have a crap year. They're trying to get rid of Chapman. They're trying to, you know, they're really trying to just basically clear the decks and allow them to be a young team. So they're gonna take and they're gonna and they have this nice shiny chip in Todd Frazier that they could go and say, Cleveland, would give me your best offer. And that may, like you said, may include a Salazar. It may include it may include a, a prospect you don't want to give up. I think it, it kind of fits into the Indians' uh, logic, though. A lot of times when you look at some of the young talent the Indians have had, like Michael Brantley and Kipnis, they've had one good year, and, and like Gomes um, behind the plate, and they'll sign them then to a three- or four-year deal, hoping that you know that one year will continue – in three or four and they get it discounted though yeah and that's kind of i think what the indians would work out with frazier is the fact that yeah he had one really solid year but has he had any other really really good years not really i mean they've been okay years but they haven't had 35 home runs and 255 batting average so the indians are thinking you know what yeah we'd have to give a little bit but this could be a guy that if he doesn't produce great numbers next year but good numbers that they could probably sign him for you know, three, four years. But also one thing I want to bring up, Rob, is 
uh, <laughs> as Josh chokes to death to my right here. Um, my bad, my bad. One thing you guys you guys mentioned a guy like Shane Victorino and how he's been linked to the Indians. I really haven't paid attention to the winter meetings all that much. But how, what would you have to give up for Shane Victorino? Well, you don't have to give up anything. He's he's a free he's agent. A what I'm saying agent. is that you're not going to have to invest a lot of money in him. Yeah. But, I mean, not not as much as you would. Let's say you wanted to do like a Todd Frazier deal. Like you're not having to give up prospects, Correct. so you could conceivably sign Shane Victorino to adopt the same type of role that you want for that you just laid out for a Todd Frazier. Yeah, your his production may not be quite what Todd Frazier's is, the Indian, but you're not having he's to about give up the what, Indians, twelve home runs. Yeah, but maybe. the Indians have done that for the past few years. I mean, you had uh, David Murphy. Um, and a solid hitter. I mean, he had good yeah, batting, average, name, but he's but just not a home run hitter. I, I think the big picture Got is the wrong Murphy in that deal. The big yeah. per- picture is is Todd Frazier is a legitimate threat right. to hit thirty home runs. Uh, maybe he hits two sixty five, mm-hmm. but he's the thing that you need in your lineup. Now, best case scenario, I may be dreaming a little bit, but in two years, Todd Frazier's you know batting two sixty five and he's hitting thirty home runs, and the Indians are in the mix for the division every year. Um, maybe, just may, and and the fans, this team starts getting interested. Uh, the, fan, the fans are waiting. Yeah, the fans are interested, and, and this is a move that could possibly get them even more interested to come down to the ballpark. So now instead of having 11,000 there a night, maybe you have 21, 25,000 there a night, and then maybe the Dolans are like, hey, we have something here. We have a good young core of guys. Uh, hopefully Brantley, Kipnis, Jan Gomes will be coming s- even further into their prime. And you have the makings if Frazier wants to sign maybe a three- or four-year deal worth or, le- uh, you know, $15 million or re- whatever the case may be. They paid it to Nick Swisher, so why wouldn't they pay it to Todd Frazier? If they're in contention, the Dolans always said if they're in contention, they would make the moves to do it. Yeah, but you have to make the moves to get into contention. That's that's the other. That's, that's my whole argument for making the trade. I, but again, you don't know what. Like you were gonna. I'm not saying it's not worth looking at to trade for Todd Frazier. What I'm saying is, is that you're getting held up at the winter meetings by a team that's literally in a fire sale before the season begins. You could be buying a, a a bill of goods in Todd Frazier. You don't know. You don't know if he's if he's in the regression of his swing. You don't know if he's having feel, problems fielding. Well, you he's, could say that about almost but, everybody. But my point is, well, we don't is, know that about the. Well, we don't know about about the prospects either, though. That's true. But what I'm saying is, is that right now in December, before the season begins, Cincinnati is already in a mode where they're trying to sell off. But they also are being a little bit smart by saying, "Look, in order for us to give you our best players." We want a, a, a king's ransom, so why not wait? You have time on this deal. It's not like Frazier's going anywhere. And if he goes to the Dodgers or somewhere else, then then what happens when they give up half of their prospects and they have nothing in the minor league system like the Yankees did for all that time because they signed all those free agents and now they're just starting to get their minor league system. Same thing with with the Tigers. They had to trade away all their good their free agents that last year to get prospects just to build up the minor league system because it was barren. Mm-hmm. So I mean. While Todd Frazier's attractive, you got to look at what Cincinnati wants, and they, and they could be saying, "Look, we want your, you know, we want Danny Salazar and your top three prospects." And that's and, that, and right now, <laughs> well, obviously, this, you don't you don't do right that. Now, but, but right now in December, that's the offer on the table. And teams like the Dodgers, who are in win now mode, who are and same with the with the Angels and everyone else, trying to keep pace with the Cubs, who had a great year last year, and the Royals, they may be willing to pay that now in December because it doesn't hurt them in December. Whereas it would hurt them come spring training. It would hurt them come the trade deadline where that's where I think the Dolans may have a little bit more. I hate to say use this word, but they may have a little more intelligence in realizing that, like, like you said, they can't win a championship at the winter meetings. They can't, but they can improve their team. But maybe the price tag for a guy like Todd Frazier at the trade deadline is a little less than what is being offered now. It could be the complete opposite, but we just don't know. Well, yeah, right. I don't think you have to worry about the Indians trading away their starting pitching without getting their own Kings ransom in return because mm-hmm. they right. don't need to trade any they don't need to trade them. Right. Exactly. That's they a don't. great point. Great and point. I mean, look at the Royals. Look, I mean, look at a lot of teams that were in the playoffs this year. They I mean, the Mets for crying out loud. Yeah, they had some really good hitters. They, they got Cespedes at the right time, but they had a guy they they played well all year, but their pitching helped them. And give the Indians credit cuz they've said that. The new GM Nick Chernoff has said that. They're like, "We're or, and even Chris and Antonetti said that we're we're no desperate need to trade any of our young pitchers. I mean, they have to look at it. Right. If it comes through, 
Um, but, it, you know, and if a deal like for a guy like a right-handed power hitter that you've needed for years comes along and is available, you do have to kick the tires. No, oh, you absolutely do. And ju- it's just the same as what you said. I mean, it kind of goes along the lines of what you're saying. I mean, you might get Fraser at a lower rate the more that this drags on. Well, that these free agent contracts that all these pitchers are signing – it really is just strengthening the Indians' hold on their own pitching because our pitching for the next f- three or four years is very good and very inexpensive mm-hmm. and very controllable by the team. I mean, there's re- I mean, you only have to worry about really Crasco and Kluber for the next three, four years. And you, as you far conceivably, as if you wanted to, if you're a smart GM, after both of them having not great years last year, lock them up even further and say, look, let's do a two-year extension on your deal. Right. You know what I mean? And here's what the market's offering. Or do you want to take your chances of free agency playing, you know? And a, and a lot of times GMs will do that. I know Dombrowski was the king of that. He will he went to Justin Verlander and said, let's sign an extension right now because you didn't have a great year last year. He was the let's king of – yeah, they signed uh, Prince Fielder to a 20-year and tra- deal and he worth traded that $80 entire billion. Tra- dollars. That worked and out. he traded the contract to Texas for who? Ian Kinsler, Kinsler. who's been our stalwart second baseman and we're paying probably – a third of what we were paying Prince Fielder to play first base every now and then. But, like, the, the Justin Verlander, Detroit signs a lot of their, their players to, like, seven- to ten-year deals, which I think are just foolish. I don't. Well, they didn't do that with Verland- Richard Martinez, Verlander, though. Verlander, Verlander, when he signed Verlander that deal. was solid had, for one year after that kidding? contract. Are you kidding Here we go. Let's be honest. Justin Verlander was Ver- solid for three solid <laughs> straight years. Three exactly. years, and he has four yeah. years <sighs> left on his okay. contract. Okay. But you, so you wouldn't take Justin Verlander in your rotation right now, you wouldn't. Not right now. No, no. you wouldn't. Absolutely not. You're saying Danny Salazar is better than Justin Verlander. I think he has walk out the door right now, dude. Verlander got lit up. Yeah, he got lit up. But also, who, who, His, who, an ERA of five is not impressive to me. I I'll still take him over half of your pitchers. Not Kluber. All I'll right. give you Kluber, and I was wrong. Hey, if Kluber. I had if I had a team that had a lot of veterans on my team, maybe I'd take him. But I have a young pitching staff that's up and coming. Mm-hmm. Why would I go to a Justin Verlander? I'm that wouldn't make I'm, sense I'm for not my saying, team right now. I'm not saying you trade for Justin Verlander. I'm saying look at your pitching staff and tell me that Justin Verlander is not better than half of your guys on your starting rotation right now. Right now, you're he's better. You think he's better than Kluber? I never I, – did I not say – no, he said, he half, said half of my half pitching, of your staff, he gave, pitching he, staff. He gave you Kluber. I gave you Kluber. Just keep going. <laughs> this is your music for you guys. Because it, well, it's about ready to get this way. No. no okay, he's, Carrasco. He's, you, no. Would take, you would take Justin Verlin, you would take Carlos Carrasco I think Carrasco over, is right over now, Justin right Verlin, now right he's right now. better. Okay. I probably would too, to be honest with you. I, I, right now. I, I don't see that logic. But right okay. now. Trevor I see Bauer, the logic. maybe not. I think he's inconsistent. I would take Verlander over Bauer. I would take Verlander over, over Cody over Cody Anderson. Yep. Over Salazar? I don't know. Cody, Salazar Cody Anderson was is pretty not, Sal, not what Salazar that's could a be. Push. Not what Salazar could be because I know he's a younger pitcher and he has a lot of upside. I'm talking Salazar right now versus Verlander. Who who you got? Salazar. All right. I listen. It's a, it's, you're gonna you're me gonna, personally. <laughs> I think it's a push. Okay, I'll agree with but you that maybe a push I, because he's on the down. Cl- on the, Verlander, admittedly, is on the downcline of his of his career. He is. He's admitted it himself. His velocity off his fastball. And that's his, why I wouldn't his, take him right now. But he's still a top tier ML major league pitcher. You can't deny that, right? Like, he, and he's not. He, and when he signed that deal, he had four solid years and took him to a World Series. So it's not like he busted out as soon as he signed that deal. They had a pretty good couple of years, and he won an MVP ten year that deal. Year. He had. He won the MVP and the Cy Young in the same year, Rob. So I, I'm not gonna. I mean, you're not gonna sit here and tell me that it was a bad deal for the Illich to make at the time. He has a contract through 2019 with a option for a 20th uh, for 2020. Yeah, 2020. 219.5. Okay. So it was a 10 year deal signed in 2009. When did he win the MVP in the Cy Young? Was it 2012? Know. Probably was. I don't know. So that was three years after don't his deal. Really care? Well, I mean, look, I can't argue the deal. Yeah, his agent see. got him the deal. But you're sitting there telling and me that. And Kate Upton. Just and saying. Kate Upton. Thank you. That's my that's my trump card right that's there. Pretty good. <laughs> that's my tr- that's my. I gotta lose. You know what it is? Kate Upton's my mic drop. Well, if it's a Kate Upton thing, I think he take I take him. I mean, over, Kate, I up, him Kate over Upton Sal. at Cleveland games. I'm. You guys are gonna get mad. You're I'll gonna take, get uh, mad. I take Verlander over Salazar in that. There respect. you go. You take Verlander <laughs> over Kluber in that res- respect too. No. Eh. 
The clue bot. Th- the clue I, have, bot. I have a feeling the clue bot has uh has one of those like girl next door wives. Oh, I bet she does. But yeah. that's 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 neither yeah, here nor there. I mean, we've already offended him. By I'm not going to play Olivia Newton John anymore. So let's just stop yeah, well, right there. Right. But I mean, but the, but. While I agree with you that long term, last agent year con- he he didn't have a terrible ERA. It was three seventy eight. The year before was four ni- four point nine. And he was hurt. And the year before that was three point eight seven. So not terrible, but if you you're just, making twenty million dollars a year, so you're uh, do, well, Rob. To be fair, I mean the way that starting pitching is getting paid nowadays, that gets you twenty million dollars a year. It's 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 insane. Believe you me. David I get Price, it. What did David Price get? Uh, he got. From uh, and that's another Boston. deal that's just dumb. To but me. again, seven years for two hundred ten million or something David like that. David Price like that. and David Price. David 25. Price is a good pitcher, but I think he's kind of he's shown signs of not as dominant as he but once I, I, was. But the, but as Ed mentioned, pitch the way the Major League Baseball is going is he's a premium too. He's a lefty, and if that's the problem. If you're if you're, a, if you're in the what is considered the top tier of starting pitching, you're going to be able to command your own price because you can't really put a pi- price tag on quality pitching. You know, hitting comes and goes. Like Miguel Cabrera has a really great contract for the, for the Tigers, but he's also produced for that contract every single year. Well, except for there's last no year. doubt. Except for last even year. even was, last year, I well, he was he hurt. Was but bad. I mean, he had a bad year last year because he was hurt most of the time. Well, that's the thing. I mean, the Indians, and that that's the trump card that I spoke of earlier that the Indians have over anyone that wants to trade with them. They have the same quality starting pitching as a whole mm-hmm. than. Probably I, I would I put the rotation up against pretty much anyone's right now as a whole. Yeah, I mean, and we were paying probably for what you're paying for what we're paying bad, for yeah. bar none best value. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the Mets have better value than and that. and that could be even more of a reason well, yeah, that absolutely. you could possibly go out and and make a deal uh, for a legit all star power hitter while you guys while the Indians have those guys that are good under a, a nice team-friendly contract for the next three or four years. And then after that, you know, you're having all kinds of guys come off the books. The Indians will probably are not going to be able to afford those guys. So we're getting into that window for the Indians where moves yeah. need to be made. Yeah. Because unlike, you know, teams like the the Cubs, uh, you know, the you're – Dodgers, the Cubs, yeah, the Yeah, you Mets. know the names. You know the names. Unlike that, Yankees. the Indians can't buy. It's like every seems to be five years the Indians um, have Just, have a window. Yep. What they've done a good job now is actually building up their minor league system. So eventually, hopefully, some of those guys can actually come up to the big league team and be uh, contributors, be all stars. So then you don't really have to worry about that window since they're homegrown talent. You're looking at the Royals, for example, can maybe grow larger because yeah. you have those guys on your control for longer. Well, I think it's it, it's it's combination. What I look at when I see your, when I see the Indians starting pitching, it's eerily reminiscent to when. Atlanta had Smoltz and Maddox and all those guys, and, and you weren't sure. There was a time period there where they weren't sure if they're going to keep all those guys, and it's going to. But it took a guy like Chipper Jones coming in, or or Andrew, or whoever coming in, and be, and creating a little bit of offense, so that they're pitching. So it wasn't all on the pitching. Those were all great pitchers, but the problem was for a time was that, like last year, at, at certain points in the of the year. You know, Corey Kluber pitches a one hitter and he loses one nothing, or, or right. you know what I mean. Like that's what it is. You know what I mean. That's and, unreal too. I mean, but that's, I mean, but that's where it is. If you guys generate just a little bit more offense, but the problem is, in order, like, I don't think it's a quick fix with a Todd Frazier. I think it is getting Young Gomes having a consistently healthy year. Maybe, maybe trying to move him out of the catching position. Um, you can't do that though. He's too good of a catcher. I mean, he, defensively, but he's what, just but, as good as he is. But he's, would that prolong his career? I mean, look. I don't think well, you're worried about they, that right that's now. That's basically what they did with San, Santana moving him to first base. I agree, but he's – But Santana's yeah, Yannick, a whole other issue in and of itself. I'm not, I don't want to compare Santana to Gomes because Gomes is a far and away a better defensive catcher than Santana easily. ever was. No, I'm not, say, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, like, at what point do you do you say, okay, Jan Gomes is our catcher? But we he it may affect his ability to produce runs. You never. I mean, you worry about that after this contract runs runs out. Exactly. Right, right now, well, he, he's your almost all star catcher. And and kind of going back to um, the Todd Frazier thing, you got a guy like that in the middle of your lineup that'll only help uh, guys like Jan Gomes, yeah. Carlos Brantley. Santana, and Brantley. It protects those guys because we talked about it earlier. Just the threat of someone going long on this team will go a long way. Yeah, but they thought that last year with Daniel Murphy. 
They, that's what that's Who? what they got Daniel Murphy for. David, 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 David Murphy. Murphy. No, whatever his name is. David Murphy no. was Sorry. never the a right power Murphy. hitter. David yeah. Murphy was never. He, was, no, he got the right. Yeah, he's he's a, a, he got the name right. He's, no, I'm saying we're yeah. talking about Daniel the Mets Mur- Murphy. Daniel Murphy was the right. Correct. Murphy. Well, we're supposed, no, we were supposed to have that with Brandon Moss last year. Yeah, Brandon I'm sorry, Moss. That's, Brandon, that's, that's Brandon what Brandon Moss, Moss was supposed to be. You know, a power hitter. You know, sorry, didn't follow. And he just for whatever reasons didn't pan out here. And you know, that's it is what it is, but. You know, but he that, wasn't guaranteed to do that, though. I mean, he had a, he had a great start to the year, I believe, two years ago. Hurt all-star, his hip. Yep. He was an all star. Had like twenty yeah. some home runs at the break. Even if the Brown, if the it, if the Browns would get that too, I'm sure they'd be great. <laughs> if the Indians the Browns were, need a right hit, right handed hitter too. If the Indians were able to get a, you know, a shred of that. Yeah. Last year, that would have helped them out that much more. But now, was you know that's the problem. I mean, with Josh, I mean, uh, do you need to pull the trigger on the Todd Father now? Probably not. I don't think you do. I think there. I think there's. I think there's enough. There's opportunity for other teams to kind of play off each other, and you know. Oh no, no, right. I'm not right. saying. I'm not saying rush in and get the deal, but don't lose out because, you know, you're afraid to not make that move. You know what I mean? And I I just think that's a move now where you have to be all in with it. If you're able to do it, yeah. you you do it. I mean, obviously, you're not going to. If you're trading, like you said, Ed, one of your uh, starting pitchers away, you're you don't have to give up your uh, key minor league talent. You right. you no. may have to give, <laughs> excuse me, give up some young prospects <laughs> struggling here, get choked up about the drive. No, you might have to give up some younger prospects, maybe Class A, Double A, something like that. But you don't have to give top of the line if you're giving up a bona fide major league starter. For exactly. Sure. I mean, where they need the help at right now is their is their outfield. You need a you need a right handed power hitter, and you need outfield depth, which is what we're we're struggling with right now. Michael Brantley's gonna be missing part of the first month of the year. Uh, you have, you know, David Murphy's not around anymore. Ryan Rayburn was not offered. Well, neither so. is Daniel Murphy. He was never on the team. But <laughs> Correct. That's a that's a that's, huge that's, that's a, a huge dep- hypothetical well, hole. And let's <laughs> not mean, forget though, with the outfield, uh, Abraham Almonte had a good year coming in. You know, Lonnie Chisenhall uh, didn't do too bad in the outfield. He was an above average, uh, an above average defender out in the right field. And that but might Almonte was a guy that I was impressed with. Uh, I thought he not only could steal bases defensively, he was pretty impressive. Did some nice job, uh, nice things offensively. And uh, in left field, though, you have Sands. And Cowgill's a guy, uh, Colin Cowgill, is who they got from uh, Anaheim. They picked him up. Um, they also picked up Joey Butler from Tampa Bay. He uh, batted two seventy six with eight home runs and 30 RBIs last year with Tampa Bay. Broke up the low hitter from Carlos Carrasco on this last yeah. strike. Mm-hmm. And he was uh, picked up off Just of waivers. Job. But, uh, yeah, they, they definitely could use an outfielder. Um, and, and you have Lindor and Zach Walters and – you know, Giovanni Urshela had a good game at third base, but uh, we'll see what happens with the Indians, guys. Go Lastly, do you, ha- do you have grades? Oh, yeah, we forgot. I'm going to give the Indians a – as of right now, I'm going to give them a B-. minus. Just because well, I need I don't them, know if I Sean need, should give a grade. I need I'll, I'll, give, I'll okay. give a fair grade. I'll All give right. a fair grade. I'll say C+, because they haven't they didn't address their major issue, which is power hitting in the middle of the lineup. Their pitching helps them, but again, their pitching is only as good as their offense. I'll say C plus, and I'll and I'll also say this: their moves last last off season going into this season and getting rid of Swisher and Bourne probably got them to that C plus B minus area because those two contracts were just weighing them down, and also getting rid of their president, who was literally stealing money from the Dolans. How much they paid? What's his name that went to Toronto? Uh, Mark Shapiro. Mark Shapiro. Mike Shapiro. Like he was getting paid a king's ransom for running that team and not running it well. I'm sorry, but he was getting a lot more money than I think a lot of team presidents do get for for the results. That How do you there. know that? I read. I read. Okay. I have a I have a buddy who's an anti Shapiro guy, and he has all the stats. Oh, an anti Shapiro guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that makes that's sense. a very but, bu- but very notice, unbi- <laughs> un- very what, I'm sa- what I'm saying uh, is is that like. He was getting paid a lot of money for not a lot of production in the in, in the team president area. I mean, attendance was down. The team wasn't doing great, you know. And then he runs to Toronto and he goes to you know an AL championship uh, on a team he barely my, built. Duff, that made my day. That's fine. I got my information from an anti guy. <laughs> okay, but it made sense when he gave me the information. I read it and at it was the fun. time it made sense. No, I will go. I'm uh, an anti Indians guys. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with a B minus as well. Um, 
starting pitching is obviously going to carry the team this year. If they can get a little bit of help in the month of April, they can start the season off a little bit uh, better than they have in years past. You know, Frank Cohen's going to find a way to get that going. You can't – I mean, you said the same thing about the winter meetings. You can't win – the World Series in April and May, but you can sure as hell put yourself behind the eight ball pretty efficiently in both of those months. So, um, you know, B minus with the thought that Lindor's going to get better. Uh, I think Gomes is going to come back healthy, much better. Kipnis is going to maintain his, uh, you know, hopefully maintain and get better, and then, you know, hopefully Brantley gets healthy. And you know that that's your stud; those are your studs right there. And if those guys can. Maintain and get a little bit better next year. Life's going to be good for the Indians. Well said, Ed. You know what? This is going to be unbelievable, but I'm going to agree with Sean. I'll give him a C plus. Wow. With, um, with, you know, lack of moves, you know, I feel like we've we've needed that bat for about 18 years now, and mm-hmm. we're just not getting it. But like I said, this is a team, though, that is there every year. You know, they're at least close in the hunt. Um, close to the end, unlike uh, you know some other sports teams that we die and love for here in Cleveland, Cleveland Browns. Um, but you know the Indians are there, so you know C C plus for them. You know especially with a good rotation, good chunk of young players, um, they could be decent this year. But uh, they still have some obviously room for growth and to add on there. And Ed said it nicely with going through the lineup. Was it was it partially because of the expectations set at the beginning of the year? You know what? I, as soon as I saw them in Sports Illustrated, I knew we were doomed. Yeah, that wasn't good <laughs> at all. I was like, what? But, but, but coming up, we're going to talk Cleveland Browns. Yes. And this is be- let this roll for the Browns, too. I mean, that has nothing to do with the Browns, yeah. but it's just as depressing. Well, we'll come back with the Cleveland Browns year in review coming up. We're Sports on Tap, part of the NEO Sports Insiders Network, presented by RRT Productions. Burn on, big river, burn on, burn on, big river, burn on. For the best coverage of Cavs, Indians, and Browns, check out NEOSportsInsiders.com. NEOSportsInsiders.com brings you breaking news, opinions, and video from all things related to your favorite Cleveland sports teams. Like us on Facebook and follow at NEO Sports Insiders on Twitter for live updates from all the games. NEOSportsInsiders.com, bringing you the best in Northeast Ohio sports coverage. Join Sports on Tap the first Thursday of every month at Z's Cream and Bean, 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley, Ohio, as Sports on Tap talks local Ohio high school sports, Cleveland sports, and national sports topics. It's all happening at Z's Cream and Bean the first Thursday of every month starting at 7.30 p.m. Join us. 